Good morning. I'm Pastor Roger from Mount Zion United Methodist Church at Peach Bottom. And welcome to our Sunday online message. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. And since it's also the first Sunday of December, we're celebrating Holy Communion together during our in-person worship at Mount Zion today. Uh, you are certainly invited, although it's probably a little late now for the invitation. Also, the uh, church sanctuary is decorated for Christmas season, and today during our in-person worship, we will light the traditional second Advent candle. Each Sunday of Advent has a special meaning for these candles. Uh, hope, peace, joy, and love. And today we're lighting the candle of peace, the second Sunday in Advent. We continue our weekly on uh, in-person worship in the church sanctuary, Sunday mornings at 11. And if you would like to join us, you are most welcome to do so. COVID guidelines, we're asking only those who have not been fully vaccinated to wear a mask, suggesting it. Second, if you're sick, especially with respiratory symptoms, we do ask you to stay home <clears throat> and participate online instead of joining us in person. And if you're not able to join us in person, we are continuing this weekly online message each Sunday morning at 11. And we have a special message for young people right here on our church Facebook and YouTube video channels. That happens each Sunday at 12 noon, but you can watch both the online uh, message and the online message for young people any time after that. That's pretty cool. But now let's open today's gathering with prayer. Father, we've prepared our homes and our gifts, Lord, but we need help in preparing our spirits to receive your message of peace. Free us from the stresses and strains of this time, and place in our hearts your peace which passes all our understanding. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll get to today's message in just a moment. It's called The Fear of Home, Fear of Home, and it's based on the Bible reading from the Gospel of Luke that we're about to hear along with a, a few verses from the Old Testament prophecy of Malachi. For 15 years, Emperor Tiberius had ruled that part of the world. Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was the ruler of Galilee. Herod's brother Philip was the ruler in the countries of Iturea and Trachoditis. And Lysanias was the ruler of Abilene. Annas and Caiaphas were the Jewish high priests. At that time, God spoke to Zechariah's son, John, who was living in the desert. So John went along the Jordan Valley, telling the people, turn back to God and be baptized. Then your sins will be forgiven. Isaiah the prophet wrote about John when he said, In the desert, someone is shouting, Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him. Fill up every valley and level every mountain and hill. Straighten the crooked paths and smooth out the rough roads. Then everyone will see the saving power of God. And that is the word of God for the people of God this morning. Thanks be to God. I'd like you to pray with me, if you will, as we begin today's message. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, today we are continuing our Come Home for Christmas message series. The series continues right through Epiphany Sunday on January the 6th, and that includes Christmas Eve. Today's message is the fear of home. Where last week's message was kind of sentimental, I would say today's is not so much. 
along those lines. Mental health professionals tell us that the holiday season is stressful, even depressing for a lot of people. I gotta say, let's face it, not everybody grew up in a perfect and, and perfectly loving home. Some of us have dealt with family conflicts, and for some, let's face it, home may be the last place you want to be for the holidays. I mean, I can remember holiday family gatherings where a couple of political discussions got out of hand. And people didn't speak to each other for several months. Uh, not saying that I was one of them, but okay. Anyway, but you know, for other people, uh, there are issues like the pain of loss dealing with the fact of uh, loved ones who are no longer with us. Spouses, parents, children, close friends. Some of us left the family home to strike out on our own as young adults. And we're kind of reluctant to go back. We're afraid er nothing has changed. Or maybe we're afraid to find that everything has changed. While that's not quite what today's message is about, we also have to recognize that not everyone is ready to face going home this time of year. For some, there's a real fear of going home. It can hurt. Home might be a, a place of judgment, of division, and, and, and pain. Might be. Um, for some of us, home does not match up with the sense of family that the TV Christmas specials tell us we ought to have. So we're afraid of going home. We aren't ready. And in fact, we may be a long way from being ready. Now, it's easy to fall into the stress trap of having so much to do before Christmas gets here. Shopping, finding the perfect gift, Running here, running there, parties, extra church services for me, extra mouths to feed. Worst of all, there's never enough time. The pressure's on, right? I think I heard about a drugstore chain in the Midwest that uh, used to advertise like this at, at this time of year. Christmas is closer than you think. Almost like a warning or a threat. I did that in my best radio announcer voice there. But then, through all this, comes John the Baptist. And I would much rather pass over John the Baptist and skip right to the stable, the baby in the manger, the angels, the sheep, all that nicey-nicey stuff. But instead, today, we get John the Baptist shouting, Get the road ready for the Lord! If you're ready for it, there is some fun in Luke 3 that we just read. You know, it, did you notice that Luke gave us this list of the rich and famous of the day, the rulers, the movers, and the shakers? Tiberius was the emperor, then a bunch of other Roman bosses, followed by the Jewish high priests. These were people whose word, very word, was law. Luke listed all these high mucky mucks, and then he, uh, and he cuts. Right to this, with no transition. At that time, says Luke, God spoke to Zechariah's son, John, who was living in the desert. Wait a minute. What about all those bigwigs? Shouldn't God have recruited one of those big, big-name rulers for this gig? People would listen to them, right? But no, God passed right over them, and he went to this nobody out of the middle of nowhere. Boy, there's some contrast, isn't it? And Luke lists for us the people who ran things, controlled the supply chain, if you will. That's power for sure, worldly power, until you consider real power. The power from above, the power from the creator of the universe. So the word of God came to John the Baptist. And John started calling people to repent to turn back to God. John, if you will, paved the way for the Savior of the world. Luke tells us that John fulfilled the promised, uh, the words of Isaiah the prophet when he said, in the desert someone is shouting, get the road ready for the Lord, make a straight path for him, fill up every valley and level every mountain and hill, straighten the crooked paths and smooth out the rough roads, then everyone we'll see the saving power of God. Now, most of us have driven on our interstate highways, 
or the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And if your eyes are open when you're driving, you just can't miss the work that it takes to build a superhighway. And you know what I'm talking about. Hills and mountains have been cut away, like this one on the picture. The dirt and the stone from, from that work fills up the places where the road crosses valleys. So you'll have a straight and level road to cruise along. I understand, though, that in the time of John the Baptist, roads pretty much followed the contours of the land, up and down hills, around obstacles, you know, a lot like most of the roads that are around us down at Mount Zion. I mean, seen a straight road around there lately? <laughs> Not likely. So straightening out hills, I'm sorry, straightening out roads, leveling hills, filling in the valleys, before a king would make a royal visit to an area, uh, they would fix up and improve the roads to get ready for the king. And there's some major construction work for preparing the way of the Lord. You can't just sit back and watch. Get the bulldozers, the steam shovels, the dump trucks, all the heavy equipment you can find, and put them to work. God's got a project for you. Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path. Fill up the valleys and level the hills. Straighten out the crooked paths and smooth out the rough roads. I've got a question for you. So do you think John the Baptist is talking about working on roads and highways? <laughs> or is it something else? John was calling you and me to get ready for the coming of the Lord. To turn back to God and get our hearts right with God. And I think you know that there are there are always some crooked ways and rough places in our lives, right? I mean, come on, you know there are things like, oh, I'll list a few. Dishonesty, selfishness, pride, jealousy, lots more. John is calling us to get those crooked ways straight in order to get ready for Jesus' coming. But like it or not, John the Baptist comes to tell us to get busy on the construction project so we will be ready for the coming of the Lord. The king is coming, but God says you and I have to clean things up and make some changes and turn away from our sinful worldly ways. And then everyone will see, then everyone will see the saving power of the Lord. <clears throat> the prophet Malachi said, I, the Lord all-powerful, will send my messenger to prepare the way for me. Then suddenly the Lord you're looking for will appear in his temple. The messenger you desire is coming with my promise, and he is on his way. On the day the Lord comes, he will be like a furnace that purifies silver or like a strong soap in a wash basin. No one will be able to stand up to him. The Lord will purify the descendants of Levi as though they were gold or silver. Malachi's prophecy came true of a messenger who would prepare the way of the Lord. No one will be able to stand up to him, said Malachi. He will clean up and purify his people as if they were gold or silver. Now this is silver refining here. I learned today and I learned this week in preparing today's message that both gold and silver have to be refined. They have to put through, uh, put through all kinds of heating and cooling. And uh, gold is much more valuable, but apparently it takes silver takes a lot more work than gold does to refine and purify it, as we see here. But there is a message in that too. Malachi says God will be with us through the process that we can endure because God endures with us. We have hope because we're not alone. So maybe that advertising slogan that says, Christmas is closer than you think. It may not be as ominous as I made it out to be earlier. Maybe we don't need to feel frenzied and frazzled, like we're falling behind, afraid we, we won't be ready in time. Friends, we're not alone and left on our own in this season of Emmanuel, because God really is with us. And that's how we can overcome the fear of going home. 
So let's celebrate the thought that Christmas really is closer than you think. Praise God. Let's pray together quickly. Emmanuel, God with us, we come to worship you. We rejoice because of the great things you've done. We praise you for the cheering of our spirits, for dispersing the gloomy clouds of our nights. You bring us light and life. No one is like you. Thank you for making yourself known in the Christ child, the Prince of Peace, and bringing us into your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We hope you find today's Church Online from Mount Zion United Methodist Church at Peach Bottom to be uplifting and helpful. If you've been blessed by today's message and Church Online worship, please share it with others. And be sure to like and follow our Facebook page to make it easier to be notified of our weekly updates. Your faithful and prayerful stewardship giving helps support the mission and ministry at Mount Zion, especially as we deal with the COVID pandemic. You're welcome to use our online giving tool for your weekly tithes and offerings and special gifts. It's easy and it's secure, so you can safely use your debit or credit card. The link to that is here on the screen. It's also on our church website and Facebook page. Of course, you can send a check by mail to Mount Zion. Please don't send cash using our mailing address that's on the screen. When you do, please remember to include Post Office Box 263. Blessings and thank you. Before I go, I do want to remind you once again of our message for young people today at noon on our Facebook um, and YouTube video channels. Today's message for young people is called, Are You Ready for Christmas? You can see the Christmas countdown here on the screen too. That's Sunday at noon every week. And with both this online message and the message for young people, you can watch them uh, as they premiere at 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock respectively on Sunday. But you can watch them anytime after that. And you can share them, like and share them so that your friends and neighbors and family members and other people, co-workers, whatever, can see them too. Because maybe there's a word that they need to hear. So give that a shot. Before I leave you, let's uh, have a word of blessing and benediction. Peace be with you and all whom you love. Go now into God's world with God's peace in your hearts and lives. Go in hope and peace. Amen. <laughs>